Now chances are you're watching this video because you just got done breaking your back, shoveling your driveway for the 50th time. You've promised yourself that you're not going to do that anymore. You're going to graduate to the big boy toys, but you're just not sure which one to buy. Now when purchasing a snowblower, you're going to want to understand some key vocabulary terms. And we're going to start off with a term called stages. All of these machines run in a single stage, two stage, or three stage system. Now what that means is it's how the materials evacuate out of the machine. Now, first and foremost, huge shout out to Toro for sending these beautiful ladies so that we can do a proper comparison. Now, when it comes to stages, what we're referring to is the way the materials come in and out of the machine. On your single stage machines, the snow comes into this auger and gets pushed up and through the chute and evacuates. That is a single stage machine. When it comes to two-stage snowblowers, you notice we have this metal auger that pushes the snow to the back. Now, if we take a closer look, you're gonna see what's called a high-speed impeller. Now, this directs the snow up and out the chute. Now, this allows it higher capacity of snow to push through, and it shoots it much further than your single-stage systems. Three-stage setups are very close to the two-stage setup in the sense that they have both a high-speed impeller and an auger, but it has an added accelerator to the front that helps break the materials down faster. The way this type of setup is built allows the machine to process more dense snow and more amounts of snow and gives it the longevity that it needs. Another category to consider is what's called a snow thrower. You'll notice there's no chute. It literally just takes the materials off the ground and it throws it, hence the name a snow thrower. Another vocabulary term that you're gonna to wanna to be very familiar with is a two cycle or four cycle system. Now your four cycle systems are very similar to your car. You put oil in your car in a separate area that you put the gas. Now this is very convenient to be able to go to the store, grab the gasoline that you need and put it in. Your two cycle systems require you to use a an oil solution and add it to gasoline at the same time. Now the benefit to this is, is every single time you start the motor, it's got clean gas and also lubricates the engine. It almost be like you doing an oil change every single time you start the car. So longevity, two cycle, ease of use, four cycle. Now, before you go out and pull the trigger on the best deal that you can find, you wanna consider the space that you're going to be servicing. Now, deck size matters. It doesn't matter what people tell you out there, a bigger deck finishes the job better. The deck height is going to determine how much snow or the capacity of snow that each one of these machines can handle. You're going to hear a ton of varying opinions on how much snow it can handle as well, because there's a few factors that you have to consider. Take for instance this power shovel. It does great up to about four inches of snow and then it starts to struggle because the bottom layers are always more dense than the top layers unless you shovel the snow immediately. The power shovel only has a 12 inch clearing width, which means on a driveway my size, it's going to take a very long time. Technically this power shovel will shoot the snow up and over 25 feet in front of it, but that leaves me with a big problem because my driveway is longer than 25 feet so I'm gonna have to be very careful in the direction that I go and it's also gonna take me a very long time my driveway is rated for about eight cars and this power shovel the battery is gonna run out between a two and four car driveway area power shovels are fantastic for condos townhomes and smaller areas and walkways and they come in right around $250 or less Price always plays a factor, and these single-stage units range between $300 and $900. The primary difference between the $300 unit and the $900 unit is the capacity or amount of snow that it can take. 
So the $300 units are typically smaller in width and smaller in height. Now I bought this Honda HS621 a long time ago and it served me very well, but my biggest argument is it only handles up to about six to eight inches of snow at one time, where when we look at the new Toro units, they can handle a much broader range of snow and easily 14 to 18 inches. Now you may not need something this big, but in my area, we get freak snowstorms about once a year that will range between eight inches and 12 inches in height. So having a machine that can handle the additional snow height and have a bigger clearing width, it's a little bit of a big deal for me. If you live in an area that only receives between two and four inches and even your freak snowstorms are up to six inches, then the cheaper single stage units will suffice. Now your entry level two stage systems will do a snow height up to 16 inches. And then once you get to the professional stages, they'll do up to 18 inches. Two stage setups come with more bells and whistles, but they also come with more power. This might shock you a little bit, but the clearing snow height isn't as big of a factor, but ideally between 12 and 18 inches is where it thrives. Where you get the most use out of it is if you have more dense snow and you get a little bit of ice and snow mixed in, it has the capacity to get through it. Now keep in mind, I'm not talking about where the snow plow has come through and built up a three foot wall of solid chunks of ice. That's more where your three stage systems come in. Average price for a two stage system will range between $600 and $2,000. Just keep in mind like the other ones, the more you spend, the more features you get. Now for most of us, we're going to choose a setup that's either single stage or two stage. Now a lot of the single stage systems, you'll notice that they will actually have an auger with a rubber paddle on the outside. Now that rubber paddle allows you to brush the surface of the concrete where you'll notice in the two stage and three stage systems, the lack of that rubber paddle means that you're going to have to calibrate the machine so that auger does not scrape the concrete or you're gonna end up chipping it. Now, not to worry because if you're meticulous about it, they've got skid plates even on the single stage units and the two stage units that allow for proper adjustments. Now, if you're a property owner in an area that has a gravel driveway or a driveway other than a paved driveway, you're gonna to wanna to go with an auger system that does not have the paddle on it. That way you can make proper adjustments to be above the gravel and you're not gonna have to worry about that paddle hitting the gravel, uprooting it and putting it through the machine. Now for most of us, the single stage units are going to suffice on residential properties. Now, if your name is hung low, you might wanna spring for that two stage or three stage system just so you can say that you can throw your snow over to the neighbor's house. Not all single stage snow blowers are alike. These two are just completely different in design. Now let's go over it. You've got the personal pace system on this one, so it will actually drive itself. So it's got a drive line off of the tires. Very, very easy to use, but you'll notice a huge difference in size and storage. Now with this comes a steel auger. We know it's single stage because the, the snow comes up the paddle, up the chute, and gets thrown out. So no difference there, but you'll notice that the auger goes off of the rubber paddle. The rubber paddle keeps this safe, but you have these skid plates that you can adjust to make sure that the metal auger is not hitting, but also that the paddle is shooting as close to the ground as you want. Now, when it comes to this Honda, the auger itself is a completed auger with a completed auger paddle system. Now, in my opinion, this keeps the concrete safer for longer. You'll notice it has a directional chute, just like the other one, except for you have to bend over and kind of manually steer it yourself, where the other one has the has the, what they call the quick stick. And this is pretty fun to use. It's a simple design, um, very easy to use. My opinion on this is the Honda has less to break and it doesn't take up 
much storage. Now, both of these are solid units. I don't anticipate either one breaking, but just some food for thought on when you're buying things. You'll notice if you look at the wheels of the Honda, it is classified as a push snowblower. Now, a lot of these push snowblowers with the paddles that surround the auger self-propel as they go over the concrete. Downside is the Honda will require more maintenance as the paddles get chewed up, where if you're very meticulous about your maintenance on the Toro and using those skid plates, you can go further with less maintenance. When factoring in costs, it usually is gonna come down to the amount of power that you're gonna get and the amount of features that you get. And the self-propelled feature is one at the top of my list. This Toro 828 Power Max HD is definitely a torque monster, but it is not fast. But the shocking thing is the single stage unit with the personal pace system, man, that thing just took right off. But it's important to remember that the heavier two stage unit is going to get through the heavier, more dense snow better than this single stage unit. But I was shocked how quick this thing rides. Now there are a few creature comforts that you'd want to consider an electric start is definitely one of them. This comes in particularly handy, especially when the temperatures get below freezing or if you're just tired of going to Tourette's every single time you pull the cord and it doesn't turn on. One of the creature comforts is not often talked about is having a light. Now I can tell you from personal experience, my dad used to wake my butt out of bed at about 4.30 or 5 a.m. and you couldn't see a thing half the time. Before making that final purchase, just ask yourself what time of the day do you commonly snow blow the driveway? Now some food for thought when purchasing a snow blower. These type of single stage and two stage machines are not meant to suck up debris like gravel or rocks. Now, the nice thing about the Toro units is they have an actual feature that slows the machine down if it feels like it's got too much debris or too much ice in there that it can't handle. Now, my point being is there's going to be a lot of hidden features that will give one product more benefit than another. And my suggestion is check out all the reviews on Amazon, on Google before making your final decision. In my experience, you're going to want to buy once and cry once. And the cheapest unit is not always the best answer. Well, guys, it's been a real treat to make this video. If you guys have any questions, comments, or concerns, hit me up in the comments below. You know I'd love to help you guys out. Until next time, guys, it's the Pest and Lawn, JJ. We're out.